Hey guys, welcome back. It's time for March favorites. I honestly think that March went by faster than February did. I can't believe this month is over already, but I'm stoked because I love spring. April is my birthday month, so that's exciting. So that is why I'm excited for this month to be over. I'm wearing short sleeves. I'm cold, but I'm still wearing short sleeves because I'm just like, I'm just like done. I don't have a ton of favorites for March, but I do have some things that I was really enjoying. So if you guys want to see my favorites, then just keep watching. Now I really only have two makeup favorites, but they're palette -y type favorites. And I'll just show you what I mean. The first is the Lorac California, what do you call I think it's called the California Dreaming cheek palette. Oh gosh. I love this. I almost put it in my last month's February favorites, but I had just gotten it a few weeks before I filmed the video, so I thought that was cheating a little bit, but I love this palette so much. Ray is like, I mean, this color is like my jam, and I really like the sunlight highlighter. Um, I haven't used, I've used Wavelength, and it's really pretty. Ray is my favorite, but I think in the summer, I'm going to use like these two colors even more and then this guy I know I'm just going to use all of the time. I don't know why I did that. When I was putting my makeup on today I didn't realize that I was going to be filming today so I didn't use any of the products that I'm going to talk about. It's fine. But this is definitely something that I was loving. I'm just like the end of the month so I'm you know I'm really kind of getting uh, I'm like I want to use new things but I definitely reach for this a lot this month and I really love this you can get this at Kohl's and I believe Ulta and I'm not sure I would assume the Lorac website but really really love this blush palette the other product is the ColourPop pressed eyeshadows I I love these. I'm so, so happy that these are so nice because I've mentioned before the matte Super Shock shadows from ColourHop I do not care for. They don't blend very well for me at least. I don't care for those. But these are amazing. The metallic shades uh, you can kind of foil and use a, so I just use a setting spray to get my brush wet a little bit. Um, the mattes blend beautifully. I always wear an eyeshadow primer so I don't ever really notice any fading because I'm oily and I always have to wear a primer but oh my gosh I love these so much I kind of want like every one of them uh, made to last this light mauve color I love actually I love all of them like all of these are my favorites I was wearing 143 a lot and then also sideline the this is a metallic uh play by play this one looks great because it's a little bit duochrome -y. so here i don't know if you'll be able to see i have used these so much this month in combination with my palette of the month and then also just on their own because they are just really easy to work with they they're just really great eyeshadows. I love, love, love these. The other two beauty things are nail polishes, and they're both from Glam Polish. Uh, one is Oz the Great and Powerful, and this is a gorgeous emerald green jelly with red glitters and flakies, and oh my god, it's, it's just it's just so beautiful. I love this. It is a jelly, so I believe this needed three coats to be um, opaque totally worth it. Glam Polish has amazing formulas on their polishes. I don't think I've used one that I was like, they're all like, oh my gosh, perfect. Um, it is an Australian brand, but they do have a U.S. Uh, distribution center. It's actually in Michigan, so that's good for me. I usually get my Glam Polishes pretty quickly. The other is also from Glam Polish, and this is called Pocket Full of Rainbows, and this is a gold leaf topper with iridescent flakies go buy it. It's $14. Yes, it's kind of a lot, 
but it is a gold leaf. I can't remember if it's 18 or 24 karat. I can't remember. I don't really care because it's just beautiful. I'm like out of breath. I'm so excited. Watch out. This nail polish. And it looks good with a shiny top coat. It looks good with a matte top coat. It looks good over light colors. It looks good over dark colors. It probably looks good over your naked nail. I've not tried that. I don't know. But I love this so much. I wore this two or three times this month which is a lot for me. I never wear nail polish back to back ever. Ever. I just don't. I always have something that I'm swatching or I just don't ever wear nail polish back to back and I wore this two or three times this month and I am like obsessed with it. The other thing is not really... it's kind of weird and it's for children but I totally use this. It's a singing toothbrush. <laughs> I got this on clearance a long time ago. I don't, I don't even know when. Um, I think it's from what is it, Arm and Hammer? It's from Arm and Hammer, and it's a singing toothbrush, and it sings One Direction's One Thing, <laughs> and it's for kids. It sings for two minutes, so they're supposed to be brushing their teeth the entire time of the song, and you know they've brushed their teeth for the full two minutes, which really isn't a terrible idea for adults either, because I know a lot of adults who are just like, <laughs> and call it good. I'm like, um, oh, it's not enough. But I needed a new toothbrush, and this is just the one that I grabbed out of the, like, backup toothbrush drawer, or, you know, area of the closet. But I love this. <laughs> it, it makes me want to brush my teeth more. And I brush my teeth a lot. Like, I don't want to have dirty teeth. I don't like when my teeth feel dirty. I'm not, like, an obsessive toothbrusher, and this makes me want to brush my teeth even more. And it's just really fun. And it, I don't know if you'll be able to hear it, but you put, push the button. Um, and you can actually, however the mechanism is designed, you can hear it better like while you're brushing your teeth. It's, just, it's really dumb, but I was like, I really love this toothbrush. It's one of the best things I've ever purchased. And it was on clearance, so I think it was like $2 or something. It was really cheap. The next thing is, I promise you, not a sponsored product placement. I know a pro about a year ago everyone was being paid to do videos about this. I am not, I promise, they've not. Re they've no idea who I am, which always sounds so arrogant when I say that, but I just mean like, I really just like this app on its own. Um, and it's the Snups app. I have been using this to categorize my swatches. I don't remember to do it terribly often, but I'll go in and kind of add a bunch when I think of it because a lot of times it's really difficult to find a swatch that I've posted on Instagram because I post a lot so I have to scroll through and scroll through and scroll through and sometimes I'm just like super bored of that and it's just easier to find them on Snups. So I've been uploading everything that I've posted in the month of March has been uploaded to Snups so far and you can create shelves and that's pretty much all I do with it is just create the different shelves for the different brands. Um, I upload my palette of the month post, my boxycharm post, things like that, that I want to be able to reference but not have to scroll through Instagram to find. And I really have been enjoying it. Okay, now for TV shows. The TV show that I have started watching and I like it but I'm pretty confused but I like it is Time After Time. I think it's on ABC and it has... Um, well, I call him Daniel Grayson, but his name is Josh Bowman. He was on Revenge, and he portrays Jack the Ripper. And listen, it's not accurate. It's about time travel, and I don't know. It's like a little confusing. H.G. Wells on the show is just like adorable, like adorable. And then Josh Bowman on the show is just super hot. Because there's time travel involved, and then some people now know about the time travel. It gets a little confusing, but I've been enjoying it. But I'm also just a little confused. And, quick mention, um, I caught up on Legends of Tomorrow, and, spoiler alert, if you haven't caught up, Leonard Snart is back, and I'm so excited. I love Snart. He's, I love him. First of all, I love Wentworth Miller because, oh, oh, it's beautiful. But I just love his character and he's like really evil now instead of like before he was like a good bad guy 
he was like a bad guy, he was good, and now he's just a bad guy. Yes. I just love it. I'm so excited. And then prison break starts really soon, and I'm so excited! I'm so excited! Okay, anyway, music. Uh, one band, just a band in particular, my husband was listening to them, and I was like, oh, what is that? I kind of like their sound. They're called the Strumbellas, and they're sort of a folksy, indie, alternative kind of band. And I really couldn't tell you one song that I like in particular, but I just like their sound. So I've been listening to some of that. Oh my gosh, this song. I'll, I'll even play these songs for you because I love them so much. The Nashville CD, like the Nashville TV show soundtrack, is really good. I That's one of the reasons I like Nashville is I like the people's voices on the show and Lennon and Maisie in particular, their voices are just beautiful. They played this song a couple times in the last few episodes and I... I had to, I bought the whole CD because I like the song so much. And it's called um, Sanctuary. I just love that song. It's beautiful. Her voice is beautiful. Both girls. Um, Charles Esten sings with them. And it's just so beautiful. The last few episodes of Nashville, they were just really emotional for me. And I wanted to just call my mom and like hug my daughter. <laughs> um, another song that I've been loving is from Rob Thomas. Fun fact, I was and am still in love with Rob Thomas. Just throwing that out there. So maybe I'm a little biased, but I love his voice. His song is called Pieces and it's a some of these songs are slow, man. I don't know. I don't know what my mood has been lately. <laughs> I haven't been depressed, but I do a lot of slow songs. I really like that song. I love his voice. I just love his voice. Matchbox 20 is. <sighs> I just love Matchbox 20. I have a story about that. It's not relevant to this, so I won't tell it. The other song is a remake, and this is definitely a side note, tangent sort of thing. So hold on here. I do not like remakes. I don't like when people remake movies. I don't like when people remake songs. I do not like when people make remake TV shows. For the most part, there are some exceptions, but I don't like them. I will not see these Disney live animations. You're ruining my childhood movies. They're remaking Anne of Green Gables, which actually makes me physically mad. Like, I'm actually mad about that. No. No. I don't like when songs get remade. Songs I can handle more than TV shows or movies, but I don't love it. And I feel like there are certain songs that just should not be remade because most people ruin the integrity of the song. I love Bob Seger. I grew up listening to Bob Seger. My parents love Bob Seger. And my parents' song, I guess, is Bob Seger's You'll Accompany Me. Uh, they've been married for, it'll be 35 years next month, and they've been together, I don't know, forever. But they've been married for 35 years, and my, my mom always says, she goes, oh, I've been in love with your dad since I was 13, because he was my uncle's friend, and they sort of grew up together, and then you know, when she was old enough to start dating and she find she got his attention and they started dating and it was just like adorable. And they were listening to the radio or they might have been at a Bob Seger concert, I can't remember. And the song You'll Accompany Me came on and my dad like squeezed my mom's hands and she goes, and that's when I knew we were gonna be married. And it's just like the cutest thing that you've ever heard. And usually when I tell that story, I cry a little because it's adorable adorable. So I was just listening to Top Country, the Top Country playlist on Amazon Music a couple weeks ago and You'll Accompany Me came on and I was like, this isn't Bob Seger, who is this? And it's Frankie Ballard and it's You'll Accompany Me and he covered it and I was like, uh, no, why would you do that? You don't cover Bob Seger. There's just people that you don't cover, but it kept coming up on the like shuffle of the song or shuffle of the playlist. 
And I don't have anything against Bob, Frankie Ballard. It wasn't that he was doing a bad job. It was just the principle of the matter. But the more I listened to the song, I was like, okay. And you know what? Frankie Ballard is from Michigan. So he gets it. He understands what us Michigan people know and love about Bob Seger. That he's a legend. Like, he gets it. I'll listen to your song, Frankie Ballard. And uh, then I just, I just kept listening to it. And I like it. I'm okay with it. I like it. It's a little bit rockier version of You'll Accompany Me. Everything about the song is the same except he did change um, how the lyrics are from Someday Lady You'll Accompany Me to Someday Baby You'll Accompany Me. And I don't love that because I just hate when people call each other baby. It just really irritates me. However, I do like the song. I, I played it for my mom and because she, she was like, what? And I played her the song and she goes, you know, that's actually pretty good. It's ridiculous. It's a four minute story for this 20 second clip I can play of the song. So it's a ridiculous that was that literally took five minutes. I'm giving him the blessing because, like I said, Frankie Ballard is from Michigan. He knows. He gets it. Everyone should get it, but especially people from Michigan. Bob Seger is a legend. Not just a Michigan legend. Like he's. Okay, this is a whole other video. Those are my favorites for March. Let me know what you guys have been loving in the month of March. And um, this really isn't relevant, but I really like my eye makeup today. It's kind of like a mermaid. I mean, it's like the end of the day, so it looks pretty ratchet at this point, but it's fine. Let me know what you guys below me in the month of March. What are you looking forward to in April? I've already gotten one birthday coupon, and that's like the best time of the year for me. I'm like, birthday coupons for April will be fun. I'm going away. I'm going to Polish Con. It'll be fun. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. If you want to be notified when I upload a new video, hit that little bell. And if you have any video suggestions, leave them in the comments down below. I will talk to you guys later.